grab your popcorn, kick back and relax because it's time for some more carnage. In today's video, we're going to be discussing shock placement and timing. And this is something that was requested actually by another viewer. On my last guide, he actually asked for me to do a guide on this and it's taken me a few weeks to actually get around to doing it. I've just been so busy. So and that's what we're going to be discussing today. And really, if, if it wasn't clear from me saying uh, at the start, basically what this is going to be is uh, showing you guys how to time your shock bombs so when your smoke runs out, you get that timing pretty much spot on perfect, regardless of where you are on the map. Um, also, how to, how to shock as many buildings as you possibly can with that shock bomb. So, let's get into this straight away. Um, before I get into anything too, too much, I want to clarify that if you see the grid squares on screen right now, I call them pixels. So if you hear me call those grid squares pixels, uh, that's what I mean when I say that. Alright, so, uh, let's look at this. Let's look at the top one. So, if you, if you can see that cluster of buildings left of the HQ there, you'll see between the sniper towers, there's a one grid square gap between each. And what you're going to notice is, if you look diagonally, which is between one cannon to another cannon, so corner to corner, if you will, uh, there's only a three grid, grid square distance between that. And that's how big the residence is, three grid squares. So the very first thing you need to note is, is that the same distance for a shock bomb, or is that a greater distance? Well, the answer to that is a shock bomb cannot, can't get as much from a corner to a corner as what it can say left to right because if you draw a square right and if you want to do this you, you can if you draw a perfect square and you measure it and make sure it's perfect if you measure from left to right and you write that number down and now I want you to measure from the top left hand corner to the bottom right hand corner what you got and you write that number down what you're going to see is those two numbers the second one that you measured, which was from one corner to the other corner, was actually bigger. And the reason for that is because there is a greater distance between the two. And if you wanna if you wanna get all like mathematical, it's about 30% longer. So that what that essentially means is you can't get as much out of a shock bomb going from one corner to the to another as what you can going from left to right. So what I've set up here and you can see three big clusters of buildings. I've actually set up a test so you guys can see exactly how much you can get out of a shock bomb, both from left to right, and like up and down and that, and left and from one corner to another corner. So a good team, a good mate of mine, uh, he's in my task force, and his name is Sarge, or I call him Sarge. He has done a test for us gracefully. So you can see, he just shocked that cluster there on the left. That's a pretty easy shock. And it was, you can see that the outline on the shock right on the edge there, it, it got everything quite easily. Um, so that's not a problem. That's, that's the distance of the buildings where if you place your shock bomb, you're going to be able to get that stuff no problem. So... Let's look at the top one now. Alright, so he shocks that. And now you can see the outline on that shock bomb. You can see that it just barely was sort of like on the edge of the of the buildings, left to right and up and down. And the ones that were from the corner, you can see that on one of them, it's sort of like just on the teetering on the edge. But the others, it's actually a little bit away from it. So you can see that that distance is not a huge thing, but it does play somewhat of a role. So let's let's continue on with this replay. And let's see how he shocks this cluster, because this cluster, it is possible, 
It's just an extremely hard job to get it, like spot on perfect. So, uh, let's see how he gets it and where he places the shock bomb and you'll see the screen register when he presses. Alright, so you can see he did that and I want you to look at the sh where the shock bomb's placed and that outline. So, on the top, on the corner buildings up the top, you can see it goes actually through the, through the residence and the iron storage. But the two corner buildings on the bottom, it's like right on the edge of it. Like it's literally just touching it. Just barely. So, so you'll see that even though that's the same distance, that's actually the same distance grid square wise as uh, left to right. It's the same amount of squares pretty much. So, uh, I thought that was pretty interesting and that's... That should give you a really good idea of what you can shock. Um, the actual size of a, of the shock bomb is about 6.2. So uh, if you measure from left to right, it's about 6.2 grid squares. And you don't your shock bomb doesn't have to be overlapping the building much for it to register as being a shock, as you can see. As long as even the tiniest part of that shock bomb is overlapping on that building it'll register it as being shocked. So, uh, that's, that should give you guys a really good idea of how to get the most out of your shock bombs in terms of placement. Now let's look at timing. Okay, so now we're going to be discussing the timing of a shock bomb. The timing of a shock bomb is critical, especially in high level attacks and task force operations and stuff like that. You mainly see this sort of thing being an issue when you're doing smoky strategies because you want to time those shock bombs to the exact moment that the smoke runs out so everything stays stunned and your troops stay safe. Um, for that reason, we're going to be sh I'm going to be using the smoke timer to actually help me time the shock bombs and I'm going to be starting off with showing you player bases with this with this player base. Um, and then we're going to be going on to a task force attack and showing you guys that. So, the, the importance of a well-timed shock bomb, just to give you guys a bit of a picture, Zookas fire a shot off every two seconds, and oh, shock bombs last, providing they're maxed out of course, last for 10 seconds. Now basic mathematics here says those Zookas are going to get off a total of 5 shots, if the shock bomb's per perfectly timed, if it's not perfectly timed or it's ill-timed or whatever, they're only going to get four. So that's a bit pretty big difference in terms of damage that you're going to be able to do. Warriors take get a shot off every one second. So warriors, there's a little bit more give. But yeah, let's get into this. Um, so there's my first smoke, and it's right on the beach. Keep in mind guys that the shock bomb does take a bit of time to get to its target. So the further it is, the closer it'll be to... Uh, let's see, yep, you guys seen that little pink ring flash just then? So that's rough. a rough guide on where the smoke's going to be, the timer's going to be when you have to press on the screen. Um, because it's right on the beach, it's going to, it's going to launch pretty quick, so... Let's just put that into half time slow motion and you've seen that smoke is now disappearing and that shock bomb is only just starting so that that's pretty much perfect. Every building has a certain time that it takes to actually aim at your troops and then fire at it. Machine guns and flamethrowers are the quickest to react. It's not instantly timed. Like, a lot of people think that it's instant firing. It's not. Um, I think it's about a half a second or a quarter of a second or something like that. And you notice it's not perfect because if you run warriors through, like, a tiny gap on a smoke, they become exposed for, like, the briefest moment of time and they don't get fired on. So, I think machine guns and flamethrowers take about a quarter of a second to fire. Um, rockets take take a little bit longer they take a couple seconds shock 
shock launchers are the same. Mortars, boom cannons, snipers. These these sort of buildings have a lot more leniency, so you can afford for that sh shock bomb to be like half a second or a quarter of a second too too late, and you'll get away with it, but not with a machine gun or flamethrower. So that was the point I was trying to make there. Let's move on to the middle of the base. Uh, you guys can see... Alright, so now th we can see that next smoke timer. And I've got it in half times just because I don't want to miss that pink ring that's going to f flash on the screen. It's going to show exactly when I pressed on the screen. Alright, so you can see that the smoke timer's... Not as close to finish this time, it's a little bit further away. Um, that's about the middle of the player base. So, you can see that it's going to take that little bit longer to get there. So, this is about where it's going to be for you. So, let's just press play and you can see it. And you can see it launch just when it finished there. So, that was some good timing. Let's move on to the last one. Alright. So now we're going to put it on half times. Because it's right at the end. It's going to take a lot longer to get there. So. Uh, Alright. So. That's. Again. That's a little bit further away. But. That's how far it's going to be for you. To have it perfectly timed. So. Let's just start playing it. And you can see. Maybe. Like a quarter of a second or the tiniest smidgen, I could have got away with a touch more. But, I mean, for the most part, that's pretty spot on. So, I'm happy with those. I'd say those were perfectly timed. So, hopefully that gives you a bit of an indication as to where the smoke time is going to be. And helps you time your shock bombs perfectly for your player base attacks. Uh, for the sake of this video, I have made... Uh, a task force just just a small one I'm not going to continue it after this video or anything like that but um, I think it'll help just so I don't have to ruin my task force attacks or anything like that on my main account so uh, I'll pause the video you guys can see how big the task force bases are that's a lot bigger than a normal player base so we're going to start with something on the beach, which is pretty common for a lot of opening attacks for a lot of people. So, uh, let's play that. And this is like a player base, like pretty much the same. Alright, so you can see that pink ring just flashed on the screen then. This is where the smoke time is going to be for like right near the beach. This is pretty much the same for those player base attacks. Those first couple ones I showed you, it's about that same distance. So, um, that should give you a pretty good indication. You, you'll see that I'm not going to slow down for this one because I it, it wasn't very well timed. Um, Alright, so let's just play this one. This is going to be the proper one here. And I'm trying to get it spot on as I can. Alright, so I just pressed on it. Now let's go half times and see just how well that was timed. Alright. So that was perfectly timed. You can see that sh that smoke is literally about to fade away now. And that shock bomb just hit. So that was perfect. So that's about the middle of the operation base. So this is where a lot of like... All Zooka attacks are going to be performed on a lot of high level bases. But there are occasions where you're going to want to be right at the top when you attack. A whole bunch of bases are up the top. So let's look at how far this one's going to be. And this time is actually going to be considerably further than what all the others have been. So, uh, alright. So you guys just seen that. So, as a rough guide, this is where the time is going to be for you when you launch this one. Um, what would that be? Like 10 o'clock? Thereabouts? Yeah, about 10 o'clock, I reckon. Um, 
if that's where it's going to be in this general vicinity so let's just or well, let's let's go half times and we'll see just how well I timed it all right so maybe like a quarter of a second too late but I mean providing you don't I think you'll still get away with that. I think the, st the smoke's just there and a flamethrower will probably take that tiny bit to target you so you might get away with that one, but uh, that's pretty spot on. That's pretty close to spot on. Uh, so I think this has been a video, guys. I know, I know this base is terrifying, I know, but hopefully the... The advice and the insight for shock bombs has helped you. Um, so that's placement and timing of shock bombs. I hope it's helped. Uh, if it has, let me know what you guys thought down below. Um, and yeah, I hope you see you guys in the next one.